Hello class and welcome to our first lecture and welcome in general to our first uh, lecture in this class, Church History, uh, specifically History of the Christian Church, CH100. My name is Joshua Lynn and I'll be introducing myself more fully in a moment. Um, let me uh, give us our description of our course as we begin uh, this course together. It is a survey of church history from the New Testament to the modern period. It will familiarize you as a student with the theological developments over the course of history. Emphasize, emphasis is placed on main figures, events, as well as the development in church worship, teaching, and lifestyle. And so I hope that's the course you intend to uh, join with, and I'm excited for this journey with you. If this will be an intense eight weeks for those of you that may be beginning your studies. Welcome to your journey of education or this phase of it. Uh, Spirit and Life Seminary has been a wonderful blessing to many as they have built uh, foundations of their ministry at deeper levels, added tools to their uh, toolbox, or whatever analogy you prefer. It will bless your ministry. I'm confident of it no matter where you're at. Um, as I said, my name is Joshua Lynn, and I will take a moment to introduce myself. Over the course of this video, my intent is to be introductory to myself, introductory to the material, clarify some of the things maybe that you may be asking if you've read the syllabus, as well as general information. Uh, that will be the first uh, video of this um, lecture to you. So first again, uh, as I said, my name is Joshua Lynn. I serve now today uh, in the state of Virginia as the state bishop, or as we have traditionally called a state overseer. Been there since September of last year, so still in my first year of this. We transitioned from pastoral ministry last year. God had uh, blessed us in many ways through pastoral ministry, both as a senior pastor, uh, several years as a youth pastor, also worked in state youth ministry and state youth work, uh, as well as other state uh, ministries over the years and have been blessed in that and just honored and humbled to be serving where I'm at in the great state of Virginia. They have been such a blessing to my family and I and have certainly um, been a great um, encouragement to us. And so uh, more importantly than even ministry is my family. Um, I am married to my wife, Chrissy. Uh, now for uh, this coming August um, will be 24 years uh, that we have uh, been married. And so uh, we have four children. Our oldest is Camille, uh, Ava is our next, Heidi and Elias. We range from college students to elementary school students, and so we're always staying busy and uh, always feel as if we have uh, two sets of kids sometimes. So uh, we feel like the aging parents with young kids one moment and, and maybe younger kids with teenagers. But nonetheless, uh, our family is our blessing. They are our strength, our encouragement, our fun, and just simply our, our overall uh, life, all of uh, the fun moments, the challenging moments, it's having family together that means the most to us. Uh, but we um, sometimes in these introduction videos or comments tell us, uh, encourage you to share some things. And some of you have already done this in the discussion or either in the uh, open um, general discussion on the main page. And so I would encourage you to do that. Tell a little bit about who you are, your ministry, your family, uh, and maybe something interesting about your life that might be a blessing to others. Uh, one of the things I often say is my personal kind of um, favorite thing to do is I love the lake uh, that is boating on the lake. Uh, over the years, we've uh, done some water sports, some mild ones with our kids. That's always been fun. As a family, we've loved to camp over the years, and we've done that a lot. Uh, we have enjoyed travel, um, whether that was short distances and, again, maybe camping uh, or a great distance to see places we've never seen before. Um, some of my kids and I have been able to travel and uh, some missions, particularly to the Dominican Republic, and we have great friends there. And so uh, being with our church family in all contexts has been, has been a blessing and a benefit to us. Academically, um, as your professor, as your instructor, uh, so that you know a little bit about that for me, I do not consider myself an expert at anything but a practitioner of all things, um, not that I've arrived at any but I've attempted to put tools in my toolbox. And so one of the things I love about what you're doing here in Spirit and Life is you're doing that. I love that uh, phrase, tools in your toolbox, because uh, when God transitioned me into senior pastoring, uh, one of the things he called me to do and told me to do was to work on my education. Not that it was the only way that I could learn, but it was an accountable way I could learn. It was a measurement of my success of growing and learning and it was something I could get on a track at one end and know how to get to the end of it. And through that process was um, guaranteed some form of 
education and learning for ministry, not the academic paper. So um, with that, I finished my undergraduate degree that I had put on pause for many years and finished that in biblical studies, so a bachelor's degree in biblical studies. And then I completed a master's of arts degree also in biblical studies. And that was um, a great experience for me. I have started and done some doctoral classes. In fact, our move and transition has kind of created a transition there, but by the grace of God, I will get on that track again soon and work towards completion of that and do what I feel like the Lord has called me to continue to do, to be the best I can be. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Again, please in the comments, uh, share some things about you and would love to do that. So let's kind of look and introduce the class, review it for a moment. Um, you should be able to access the syllabi uh, through the website. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. I'm pulling that up here uh, to make sure I have that for us and so that I can go over that with us. Um, it, I will not read it all, but again, it's all listed out in the opening pages of the course, and you do need to read this. This is a part of um, a higher learning process as you always have a syllabi or syllabus that you are able to utilize to go through. It tells you your expectations, and so you need to understand that. Uh, the course description is listed there. I kind of roughly read that earlier. The course objectives uh, tells you some of the things specifically in the design of this course by the administration at Spirit and Life Seminary, some of the objectives and the outcomes. I will let you read those. I will spend more time of helping you try to understand the actual activity that you will be doing. First, hopefully by now you have received your uh, required textbooks, Church History and Plain English by Bruce Shelley, uh, preferred fifth edition. It'll be easier to keep up with things by that. Um, there are a few, I believe that is also available on Kindle if you would like to utilize that as well. And so I encourage you to do that. Overall, throughout every week, we'll have a similar format. There will be an opening um, lecture within the first day that will has a required minimum that we have. We aren't just trying to give a lengthy lecture to you, but academically, uh, I'll cover a variety of things here. Academically, there's a requirement of those who monitor and make sure we provide a quality education at Spirit and Life Seminary, that there are required minimum what they term as seat hours. They evaluate lectures, reading, writing, participation in class discussions, um, things of that nature each uh, create a value of seat learning or seat hours. And so each of these things are a part of your minimum requirements to complete this course. So I have a minimum requirement of me of what I provide you in a lecture each and every week. And in that lecture, the intent is not to cover all of the reading. Um, I have generally over the years taken a couple of approaches. Sometimes I will highlight um, just a quick highlight from all of the reading just to mention it, to get you prepared as you're starting your reading, as you're starting to process that. However, a lot of times I have leaned into a two or three points because again, my lecture is limited. Um, I have a minimum, but I don't want to go over and be too lengthy. Um, and so I may discuss in more detail uh, an area for you, not so much that it is the most important thing, but one, it's I think interesting and two, it's a great discussion so that hopefully I can through my lecture help you begin to process that information in a way that would um, illuminate in you that would become something that not just you re retain the quote of the author, but something that you can hear, that you can process, and that you can uh, also communicate that in a way to agree, disagree, and utilize in your ministry. So sometimes I'll take just one, two, or three pieces and do that for you. So that'll happen each and every week. There'll also be a short devotion each and every week for you. And that is just a method of us knowing that this is not only an academic journey, but a spiritual one to attempt to provide that moment for us as a class together. And so please um, participate in that uh, as we do that. These lectures will be all posted in your first page when you go to the lesson each week. Um, because there is a devotion and a lecture, there will be a minimum of two videos. Um, this course I have taught before, and so there are some lectures that I may utilize portions or maybe even all of previous lectures. And so there could be a, th a third video, in other words, a devotion, an introduction from today, 
and then the core of the lecture from a past lecture. Um, and then occasionally, every now and then, there will be an outside resource listed there. Simply put, make sure you look at every link, make sure you look at everything, process that in the first a few days and it'll make sense for you. So the course requirements for you beyond listening to the lecture and beyond the weekly reading that will be posted on that uh, is first your discussion forums. This is an attendance and a participation requirement through Populi that you must uh, have a minimum of 300 words in your initial post and then within the time you must also have a reply to other students of a minimum of 100 words as well. And so this is a moment that um, is not intended for you to just simply say, I agree, uh, brother or sister, that's phenomenal, great job. Certainly we want to be encouraging, we certainly don't want to be discouraging, but this is a class discussion, which is where do you see things you could add to that? What are things you could uh, contribute to that discussion or maybe even s mention I also noticed in the reading this part, it relates to you're adding value to the discussion. This is not an amen moment. Um, honestly, it's um, a little easy to do that, but please be careful that you participate and add value to a class discussion. Uh, that will be a benefit to you and to the other students in the class. And so this is something that you, you need to do each and every week. And so. Uh, each discussion question series I give you will be different. Some will give you a list of questions to answer. Some uh, will give you um, like maybe three categories and you pick one from each category or each list. And so read the instructions of the first few, few sentences. Um, this is important for you to do the right questions. Um, and this is something that you need to do. Again, um, engage in that. Um, I am more gracious in those early weeks of all of the writing and all of the assignments because I understand some of you are just beginning your journey, each of you are at a different place. And so I want to give you an opportunity. So listen to some of the feedback that we attempt to give. And I hope that your writing, regardless of my feedback, you continue to grow week to week in that. And so um, do that. Uh, the, also, you have a, um, another weekly assignment that you will have each week, and that is a weekly test. Uh, if you've been doing Spirit in Life courses, this is a new component, um, and I'm still working towards this as well to do it well, but this is something at the end of the week you will be required to do. It's a series of questions. We have a minimum number we provide. There will be often one or two essays included, as well as from multiple choice, true and false, simple answers. Um, these will come from your textbook. It is an open book, test book. You have a minimum, uh, I believe it's an hour and a half that you have to complete it in. So you have to be familiar with the text. You have to know something of what's going on. Um, we're not going to make it overly complicated, but I'm also not going to make it simple and easy every week. You have to know the text. You have to be aware of it. So again, that's not to make it hard. That's so that you are learning from it and not just uh, quoting um, things in it. Um, at the end of the course, you have your church history analysis final paper. This paper is five to seven pages, and it will be on a major figure that you choose through Christian history. And you have the option of either A, um, finding someone from the early Christian period um, to the Middle Ages, or a Christian figure from the time period of the Reformation through contemporary times. And so as you look at this, this is the content uh, must include the description, which the details of that is included in the syllabus, uh, analysis, comparison, and construction. Read the details of the syllabus to know more about those. Later in the course, we will talk some about it as well. Um, your grades um, are overall 35% of your discussion, 35% of your weekly test, and then 30% of your final paper. And so that sounds like a lot maybe to some, but it certainly is doable. One thing that both in your final paper and your discussion that I find is difficult um, for all of you, no matter where you're at, but certainly our preachers and teachers that are in this, we sometimes write as if we're preaching. Certainly there's some similarities, but this is not time to preach me or another classmate a sermon. This isn't time to say it reminds me of a sermon I preached, etc. Uh, one, that's a lot of words that you're writing that are unnecessary, but two, you're engaging with a text. You're engaging with this academic source. You're listening to it, letting it make an impression upon you 
then taking the knowledge it has given you and the other things you have studied and then speaking into, um, it's not just an academic, but it's an engaging conversation. And so don't sermonize your writing. Uh, think through it, uh, look at it. Uh, you may eventually develop it into a sermon. It may be a great resource for a sermon that is wonderful, but um, this, is, this is not time to say it reminds me of this passage and, and articulate the meaning of that passage and then tie it back in. Um, this is church history uh, that you're going through your, for this course, your, your instruction is your textbook. So use that, quote that. Certainly you get to quote it. You can't um, uh, just say, I agree with it. I need you to engage. The highest level of learning in many respects is when you hear something, you retain it, and then you can articulate it in a way, not just to be agreeable, but to be applicable to others uh, in that. Uh, let me also mention a couple things where regarding things such as late work. Um, again, I told you I would be early in the first few weeks of your writing. Uh, certainly that needs to develop. Late work is a little bit of beyond my control personally. It's through, again, having credibility as an academic institution. Um, if by the end of the first week it's not uh, submitted, your um, discussions are not submitted, then it's a zero. I cannot go back and change those and you will be locked out of the discussion questions. You have to make your postings in the period of the discussion that is had. And so please do that or it's just a zero. There's nothing I can do. In the case of an emergency, let me know as soon as possible. I will evaluate that. Then I can forward, it, forward that to our administration requesting um, how we could work around the specific situation. Certainly emergencies happen. Myself and the administration is going to be gracious. However, um, it's not because an emergency happens. I know as ministers, we have funerals, we have people in hospitals. And so um, as a word of caution, do not wait until the last minute to do this because there will always be a burning fire that will take you away from your studies at the last moment. And so if you get in a routine of doing it ahead of time, um, early in the week, you will be better off. Your final paper will be graded in one week after you have submitted it, meaning that, again, if you have a delay, um, you're going to have a problem, and then you have a one-letter grade uh, drop after that. And so uh, I have a deadline I have to submit grades to, so please um, make sure you do that. Any questions, you can always email me in the description. There's my email address. Uh, it's the Spirit and Life Seminary address. That is the best way to get me. Certainly, uh, if you have a, another email, maybe some of you know me personally, that's fine. But I do attempt to keep Spirit and Life uh, activity there because I manage my time in a way that um, I try to give so much time to Spirit and Life and then my other responsibilities. Do not be posting, do not post questions in on the bulletin board for me. Sometimes I don't see those as often. I do keep a check in my email more frequent than I do the bulletin board. And again, it's something that everyone would see. And so be careful of that. Please again, email me, give me, I usually say around 24 hours. I try to do it before then. But nonetheless, if you have a question, please do that. Uh, if you have a question for your other classmates, certainly use your bulletin board, comments you want to share, testimonies, prayer requests, anything like that. The bulletin board is a great place to do that, to engage with your students. And I know that you uh, will be blessed in, in doing that. And so um, I, I encourage you to do that. One last thing I will mention before we jump to the lecture for this week is um, in the devotions and in these beginning um, uh, opening lectures for me is uh, like today I'm in a hotel room because I'm currently on a trip in Israel and wanted to do some of this here. Our schedule hasn't allowed to do some of it the way I intended, so uh, we'll go to plan B. But nonetheless, um, as, as my life in ministry changes, some of the settings may change, but nonetheless, uh, I appreciate your, your patience in that. And so I look forward to this journey. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will do my best to help you and to be a part of this with you. So this is going to conclude this video, and then you're going to have a short video that will jump into the material for this week. Listen to both of these, and I hope you have a great week, and be blessed. God bless.